Hello everyone and welcome to this Python tutorial. In this tutorial, we will learn to test the REST API using the request library. So let's begin. Python request library is very much helpful when you are actually testing the REST APIs. We know that Selenium does not support the testing of the APIs, but what you can do is that you can utilize those request library and you can test the APIs. And you can also utilize that library in your automation testing. So in our previous tutorials, one of the previous tutorials where we were automating the broken images, we utilized that library. So let me show you this one. And you know this is our basically a Selenium project. We are learning the Selenium here with the Python. And here you see that we are using this request. And using that request library, this is not from the Selenium. This is coming from the Python, it's a Python library. And utilizing this one, I was actually able to test the broken images, right? So using the same one, I can, or we can test the REST API. So let me show you how we can do this. So let me create one new file here. I'm naming it as REST API. And in this particular tutorial, let's go and test with the get method. And obviously we are not opening the browser, so I will not be using the Selenium library. I will be simply using the request library and test my API. So for that, uh, the first thing I really need is that I need to import the request library. And now, when we are talking about the REST APIs, we have one thing known as a base URL. Then we have the endpoints, right? So first, let's create a variable called base underscore URL. And here we will provide the URL. So for this particular tutorial, uh, let me put the browser here. And let's go with this APIs request.in and here let's go with the fetching the single user if i click on this one you will see that it will fetch the user details here and this is the complete path so let me copy this one from here and let me go back to the pie charm here and let me provide this url here so here till dot in is basically a base url and rest is known as a endpoint so let me move this from here and let me create one more variable called endpoint and endpoint is equals to this one. Now we have the base URL and endpoint and now what we can do is that we can form a complete URL. So URL is equals to base URL plus endpoint. So it will make us a complete request for the get method. Okay. And now utilize this import request library. So what I'll do is that I'll create a variable called response. And using this one, I will say, you see that request dot, and we have this get, we have post. You see that get, we have post, we have session, we have codes, status codes, right? We have a delete, patch, put. So we can test all these APIs. So in this particular data, we are just focusing on the get one. So simply I will go with this get one here. And here I simply need to provide the URL because my URL contains both the endpoint and the base URL. So now you might have a question that why I have created this separate base URL and endpoint because tomorrow when you are working on the real-time project your endpoint might get changed your base URL might get changed so you need to keep it separate in order to make it more flexible and more uh, in terms of modifying and less efforts in terms of you know modifying your code so that's why you need to keep it separate otherwise you can have a single URL and you keep all the complete URL over here but this is not recommended. So 
now uh, using this one we are just sending a request so what i will do is that let's see if i send this request so what are we getting in the in this response variable so let me copy this response variable from here and paste it here and now uh, let's run this one and see what happens so we are getting response 200 and that's what we are getting apparently look like we are not getting much information so basically what we need to do is that in order to get the more information so let me unpick so response dot so from response what we need either we need a status code we need a json so if i go with this json and now if i run this one here you will see that we are getting a response so we have successfully you know requested for this get api and we are getting this particular response here if we use response dot json here right so uh, let me remove this line from here and for this particular tutorial uh, we can simply use if and else to verify the response so if response dot you see that we have the status code so if we say that status code is equals to 200 this means the request is working fine right so if this is the case then i will say print then print what print request is successful i need to put in the quotes request is successful and status code is 200 else what we do say else else i can print something your api is not working request is not successful okay so this is what i'm printing into this one and also what you can print is that if the request is successful then we can also print the here just like uh, we can print the response here so response dot json so it will print this message your request is successful and stress goes 200 and then we are also printing the response this is the response we are getting so let me run this one and see what happened so you see that the request is successful and the status code is 200 and we are printing the response we are getting from this particular api so in this way you can utilize this request library to test the apis if you're using the selenium automation right even if you're using any other tool you can utilize this python request library to test the apis thank you so much for watching this tutorial if you like our content then do like comment share and subscribe our channel once again thank you so much and see you in the next tutorial